Hey everybody, this is part one of a video um, orientation to using GitHub. Uh, this is for community GIS, a course taught at the University of Georgia. Um, since we're not having class this coming Tuesday, this is a chance for you to uh, see online how to go through doing a couple of things. There's going to be a video here about just using GitHub online. Um, particularly forking and, and creating pull requests for uh, repositories that are present online. And then there's going to be a second video where we talk about uh, cloning a repository to your desktop and using RStudio to upload files like a web map um, to that online and setting up a, a web page. So um, as you know, as we've talked about in class, uh, GitHub is a, a client for uh, being able to uh, collaborate on code and text online. It's used a lot for open source software development, among other things. Um, GitHub's not the only client of a service of its kind out there. There's another one called Bitbucket, for instance, that has some popularity as well. They all use an underlying service called Git. And actually, uh, when we get to the second half of this video, you'll need to make sure that you have Git installed on your computer so that you can uh, clone repositories to your desktop. If you just Google Git download, you'll go right to the page where you can install this on whatever system you're running. It covers Mac, Windows, and Linux, which is pretty much everything at this point. So um, you should go ahead and do that at some point before you start uh, part two of the video. So what I have here is I have a sample account set up. This isn't my main GitHub account, but I have a test account set up um, for us all to look at. And you'll notice that you know on GitHub, uh, this is kind of what your, your profile dashboard looks like. Uh, the main way GitHub works is through these things called repositories. Notice I don't have any um, repositories set up. You can think of repositories as a certain project, right? You can have one repository that's got a software package, or it's got a particular um, set of code for doing a certain kind of analysis. Or it could be something like a web page. There's lots of different ways that repositories can work. And you can set up as many repositories, essentially, as you'd like. Um, by default, they're public. You can have private rep repositories on GitHub that nobody else can see. Um, but that costs a little bit of money. So what we're going to do here is just walk through the, the process of using Git online. One of the most common tasks that people do is to collaborate on things like software packages, right? In this case, we're just going to do really simple co collaboration with a document that's set up online already. And to do that, we have to find the document. We're going to search GitHub for my main account, which is jshannon75. When you search for that, you'll see it's got some codes, some commits, and then users. Um, so this is me right here. Click on users and then click on this. And you'll see I've got 17 repositories set up. Um, I'm not a major GitHub user. You want this one called Sandbox. So if you click on repositories, you'll see the list of all the repositories that we've got. Let's click on Sandbox. And you'll see there is a uh, document here. It's It might look a little bit different than what what you see here, but basically it'll have a blank document. And what I'm going to ask you to do through this uh, tutorial is to add a book that you liked as a kid. And maybe you didn't like books as a kid, make one up. But pick a book that you may or may not have liked as a kid and add it to um, this repository. So you'll notice that it's not like this is like a, uh, I can just click on it right away and just start editing, right? This isn't like Google Docs. Um, Git works in a little bit more formalized way. It's a little bit like Dropbox, a little bit like Google Docs, but it's different from both of those. Um, so this is a document, this readme.md. Um, MD stands for Markdown. Um, that exists right here. This is what it looks like as Git renders it. If we want to see the actual code, we can click on Raw. This is what the actual document looks like. You'll notice that that sandbox at the top uses um, this hashtag as a header marker. So this is the way that Markdown works. And then those bullet points are very simply just an asterisk followed by a space. And that's the way you tell Git that you want something that looks like a um, bullet point. If we want to edit this document, we have to actually click on the Edit This File um, button. So if we click on that, uh-oh, let's try this again. Try reloading the page. There we go. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but it works now. So let's look at this notice that's up at the top of the page. You're editing in a file in a project you don't have access to. That's because this isn't my repo. This isn't my repository. Um, this is owned by jshannon75. Remember, that I'm logged in under a different account, CML test, in this case. And so what Git does is it says, look, you can't edit the main project. 
but you, we want you to be able to share. So what we do is we create a fork. And what a fork is, is saying, we're gonna copy whatever's in that repository and we'll place that copy um, in your own list of repositories, right? And then you can edit it. And when you're done, you create a pull request, which says you wanna merge it back to that main um, repo that's owned in this case by jshannon75. That main account will take a look at it. If it likes the changes that you made, they can approve the pull request and it'll get pulled back in to the main account. And so that's what we're gonna do here. In this case, you can see um, we're just editing it. Um, we'll walk through how this works in a second. Um, but we can just edit it right in the browser. So we're going to get rid of test and we'll type in another book. I'm going to put in The Dark is Rising, Susan Cooper book from the 70s that I kind of liked when I was young. Uh, so we'll put in The Dark is Rising. Um, you could add in another bullet point if you want. We won't put that in here right now. But we add another bullet point just like this. Right? If we want to preview the changes, we can click on preview changes. Notice this is what's called a diff on Git. It'll give you red for the stuff that you got rid of and green for the stuff that you added. Um, so we got rid of test. We added dark is rising. And then the way that this works is you have to um, create a commit. That is, you have to commit changes to the document. Here it's being called proposed file change. And you just type in some kind of short message about what you did. So in this case, added Cooper book. You don't have to add the optional extended description. Propose file change. Click on that. And now notice at the top of the page here, we've got a, um, a fork, right? CML test sandbox. So actually, if we go, um, I'm going to copy this page and just show you how this works. If we go over to my uh, test account profile, remember before we didn't have any repositories. Now we do. We have this sandbox repository. Right, and um, we've uh, changes don't show up here, but we've created a cloned version of it. Git's kind of making this easy for us to commit a pull request. So we click on this button and say create pull request. That is, we want to make these changes to the repository. Let's we'll keep the same name, added Cooper book. That'll be the, the term that we use. And click on create pull request. It's going to check and say, OK, there's no conflicts. Nobody else has made a change that messes with your stuff. It kind of does some comparison. And that's it. Now we've created a pull request, which doesn't mean that it's changed. right? If we go to our profile here and go to jshannon75 again, take a look at that repo. Actually, we can just click on this is what we can do. Like The change hasn't happened here. But if I log out of this account, and sign into my main account. Notice I've got a notification up here, and it says, oh, look, you've got a pull request right here. And it says, um, there's been this pull request. You can um, look at what it was if you wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and merge it in. Confirm the merge. There we go. So now if I go back to this repo up here, notice the dark is rising has been added. So that's a way to edit um, a document on the web browser and um, fork, make changes, merge pull requests back in. So what I'd like you to do is to, and if you have to watch this video again, that's fine. What I'd like you all to do is to add a book to this list. This is your question of the week for this week. So uh, create through the GitHub account that you created in class or that you've had already. Go to this repo, jshannon 75 sandbox um, Edit the document, add a book, right? And then create a pull request to add it back in. On ELC, what you will do is uh, create a post in the discussion board that says, here's the book that I added so that we can get, get you credit for what's going on. So that's the end of this video. This is part one. Part two, we'll talk about how do we clone these repos to our desktop and make changes on our desktop. Um, so uh, go ahead and let's just do the sandbox exercise right now.